Hello and welcome to Unbox the Podcast, the podcast that helps you live your best life. I'm your host, Sahar Hunaydi Palmer. And in this episode, we're going to talk about the common stumbling blocks of why you might get stuck. In the last episode, we discussed one of the major issues that clients worry about or wonder about, which is what is my life purpose? It seems to me as though unless they receive some kind of reassurance that they are on track, that this is their destiny, this is what they're meant to do, this is the person they're meant to marry or the country to live in or the house they need to buy, and so on, they don't move forward. But life isn't really like that. And most of my work is about shifting their mindset, allowing them a different perspective on life so that they can act differently. Why? Because everything is controlled by our mind. Controlled, I mean your mind is the master. Your mind is in command of how you react, how you feel, how you interpret those feelings, and therefore your belief system forms, and therefore you make decisions based on what you feel and think. So unless we're aware that we can transcend that by having a different point of view, we are going to remain stuck forever on the Ferris wheel, going up and down, going through the same thing, and then complaining that this is not the life that I signed up for. So I want to change all of that. My own life experiences and my professional experiences really showed me, because I shared, I shared the life journey of more than 15,000 individuals, and I saw a pattern. And I think it's part of the human condition that unless our brain knows we're safe, we do not take a step forward. But the reality is that when you take a step forward, whether you're aware of the direction or not, you will get a feedback from your world, from your reality, that will indicate whether you are stepping in the right direction or not. So instead of getting stuck, instead of overthinking, which will make you spiral down the rabbit hole, you actually need to act to take a step. I very often use the example of when you're not really sure whether to dive in or not, if the water in the pool is too cold or too hot. You know, you dangle a foot, but you need to dangle a foot. (laughs) You need to jump in, otherwise you don't really know. So it's the action that makes things happen. And if it is the wrong step, you can always modulate your plan, your um, what you want, whatever you want to call it, your strategy, whatever it is that you're doing. And very often, the second important point is letting go of what you really want. Because if you're holding on to a certain expectation, you're only setting yourself up for disappointment, for loathing yourself, for feeling guilty, not acting the one way or another, not having said one thing or another. But when you take the pressure off, and you just sit back and you observe without judgment. We call that in holistic therapy the benign observer. When you observe benignly without putting labels on, without saying, um, I don't know, I had bad parents, I'm an abused person, I can't trust anyone. The minute you put a label on, the minute you've boxed yourself, and it's a lot of work to come out of that box. However, when you observe benignly, as if you are in a gallery, you're observing um, a painter, an artist painting on blank canvas, and just observe the patterns, the anomalies, how they form, and what is the picture that they're forming. It becomes a lot easier to interact, to modulate, if you are in the present moment. In other words, if you don't drift too far into the future, if your mind doesn't drift too far into the future, If your mindset is not stuck in the past, victimhood, you know, I have been uh, let down, I have been disappointed. So, so long as we're carrying that kind of baggage, fear of the future, or pain over the past, you're not going to free yourself and be available fully, your brain is not going to be available fully to interact with what is happening right now. I've mentioned this before, the trick about the future is that it is in the present, It's the seeds that you plant right now. Those are the ones that are going to grow into the future. 
It sounds simple, and it is, but it's really difficult for most of us to do. And the reason why is not the star sign that you're born under, but this is truly how our biology behaves. Your brain's job is to save you, to protect you from the unknown. So the unknown could be a new relationship, a new job, a new position, a new country, a move, etc. Anything new that is unfamiliar will hold you back. But when you're open, you are really open for a lot of options. You are open for the answers to come from different directions. And when you observe what's happening in your life with curiosity, what is that showing me? Instead of, oh no, why is this happening again? You truly begin to see a different picture. You begin to see that the feedback you're getting, although you may not like it, is to your advantage, to your benefit, so that you can let go of whatever is not working for you. It's very much like when you go to bed, we need to sleep, human beings. We need to sleep and we need to sleep well because the brain rewires itself, reorganizes itself while you're asleep. It really automatically does put away things that no longer work for you. It's kind of like it defragments, as we used to <laughs> with computers in the past, with software in the past. So you need that break to realign, to reorganize. In the same way, you need to let go of any emotional expectation. And I say that because the whole system, all our cells are wired to perceive. So perception is no longer limited by the five senses. We can actually sense with every cell of our being. I mean, you must have heard about this, that even organs store memories and people who have received transplants can sometimes get flashes of memories from the individual that donated that organ to them. Just search the net and you'll see what I mean. But I'm here to say that every cell perceives. And if you say you're sitting in an interview and you're so worried whether you're answering well or whether they're gonna choose you for that position or whatever it is, you're not focused on the conversation that you're having. You're not focused on what's going on. Your mind, your brain literally is not free to act quickly, to respond, to modulate, to reorganize your words to put you in command of where you're driving this conversation. So you'll miss out. People often talk about um, the law of attraction, the law of attraction, the law of attraction. I look at it as a scientific equation because it is the nature of energy. Energy is indestructible. Even in our death, we are not destroyed. Energy is also, your, in a mental form, your thoughts, your beliefs, your ideas, how you spend your time, what do you think about. All of that is energy, and energy doesn't go anywhere. It materializes on some level in some way. Without going into too much detail, really be aware of what you're thinking about. The minute you catch yourself spiraling down the rabbit hole, stop, simply stop, and tell yourself, I choose to think differently, or if you're feeling victimized, stop and tell yourself, I choose to feel differently. Very often, it's that simple word that stops your brain in its tracks and lets it know, I don't want to run that program. I want to run a different program. I mean, literally, if you can do that three to five times in a row, whenever you catch yourself, you will begin to transform. Your body, every cell, will not pick on that um, electrical input, if you like, that I feel awful, I feel down, I feel victimized, I lack luck, or whatever it is, anxiety. And therefore, you will cancel that program and you will not react in that way anymore. So it, in a sense, it is about the attraction, but I'm going beyond. I'm saying you need to understand how the human body functions so that you can become the master of the physical vehicle to your consciousness. There's another big point that I want to make here. It seems to me that what dictates how we behave is our perspective and, in other words specifically, how we define who we are and how we identify with ourselves. These are the main boxes that we imprison ourselves in. So if I perceive myself in a certain way or at a certain level or because of the money that I have or the success that I've enjoyed, you're paying attention to a materialistic, 
identity that is that associates with the lower self or as they call it with the ego you're not leaving your mind open to perceive because our mind our brain is literally like a transmitter and a receiver so your brain is like the TV and your mind is like these satellite chan um, channels so the brain will project to you whatever thought you're picking up so your mind and your brain are not the same thing and this is important because the brain is part of the vehicle that you're running but your mind is the master driver so your mind belongs to your consciousness which all of it is not in your body there's only a small amount of our consciousness in our body if that's new to you we can let me know we can expand on this concept but this is the thing that whether you believe it or not if you adopt that kind of view you'll begin to see things differently who is in command and it is your mind that is in command I remember I don't know about 32 years ago I read an amazing book very long book that was called you can't afford the luxury of a negative thought and it kind of like took 600 pages to understand <laughs> that you literally cannot waste energy thinking negatively and yet we do it's like a dog with a bone we can't let go of that thought we need to understand why did she leave me we need to understand why he longer loves me etc and then this is again where we begin to dig a big hole for ourselves and then it takes so much to come out so your physical body literally all the cells and all the organs in all your body pick up electrically what is happening as senses as sensors that feeds your brain this is how in a very simple way this is how our bodies function and you store that memory you store that memory because your muscles need to learn for example don't lean too much to the left or don't leave to the right or don't come too close to that person and so on then you have a feeling so this inputs in the body the input that goes into the body begins to stir some emotions within us these emotions are the result of your brain answering your physical body by sending signals to the right glands to the right hormones to activate you to move you in a certain way to activate your reflexes if you like if the same situation or a similar situation keeps repeating itself you begin to form a belief around that situation so we move I call them the four dimensions of change we move from the physical body that senses all experiences these experiences trigger an emotional reaction if the emotional reaction or if the experiences is repeated and the, another, the emotional reaction is enforced it will begin to form a belief system I don't like him I'm not gonna be close to him or I'm hurt by relationships I'm never ever gonna have another relationship again or I lost my husband I'm never ever gonna open my heart or feel in, or be in love again you can apply to whatever experiences you're going through but this is how it works and once we have that belief the next or the fourth dimension the third dimension is your mind physical body emotional response mental response and finally the fourth dimension is accountability of your actions so if you pick up on something you repeat the, emo the emotional response is repeated it begins to form a belief system and that belief system dictates the decisions you make and together these four dimensions interact they interact and they modulate each other whether they enhance each other or make each other worse is up to you what controls all of that is your perspective so when you go through something positive or negative what I suggest you start doing instead of asking why is this happening to me you can start you can begin to ask what is this showing me it's a totally different question that can lead you to a totally different outcome and according to how committed you are to reflect on your experiences every day I just mean contemplate reflect in a benign way we go back to the benign observer then you begin to see the patterns of what is causing you the struggle or what is causing you to get stuck it's a complicated thing because the human beings are more like a matrix we're dealing with consciousness we're dealing with the conscious we're dealing with the unconscious we're dealing with the actions belief system emotional state old memories physical aches and pains in the body and what really helps me to sort all of that out is my intuition 
I listen and I tune in and I can feel, sense some patterns, energies, where they're stuck, what organ hurts more, or where is that memory stored, and so on. It's like, chuk, 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 chuk. it happens so quickly. <laughs> but I, I just need to be so focused that I listen, and I can tell from that vibe what it is that we need to unbox together, or what it is that we need to do. And it is not difficult. Many of my clients just shift within three sessions. Really, it isn't. What is really difficult is to face the person in the mirror. To be truthful, to be honest with yourself, to truly admit to you, who am I to yourself, who am I, and who is in charge. And once you're truthful and honest with yourself, if everything begins and ends with us, then it is us individually that we need to work on ourselves, because the single individual affects, sends ripple effects to many around us. And this is why I'm so passionate about helping people, leaving something behind. And I hope these podcasts will run even after I'm long gone. Because I've been there. I've been really stuck. I sought advice and nothing resonated with me. It felt like a generic advice that it wasn't meant for me. And it didn't help me become any clearer about what decision to make and which direction to move in in life. And in the last 32 years or so, it really became apparent that this is an interactive game and we need to keep tabs on ourselves. Many people ask me, like, do you go through any problems or struggles? Now, yeah, I do every single day. They're on a different level. They are in a different way. It's more about like fine tuning, building up your resilience, um, learning to let go of the outcome, learning to be objective and to see things as they are. There is nothing personal. Everything begins from within and is reflected outside. And when you realign, clean up, reset what is on the inside life begins to change on the outside i hope this has helped you see things differently please get in touch let me know if this has been helpful and remember to subscribe and leave a review if you have time it's just good karma take care for now and see you in two weeks this is sahar hunedi signing off